I'm Jonathan Womack. Welcome to this edition of Community Insider. Stay tuned. Coming up, we're going to give you full details on the up-and-coming Tennessee Wild Manning Crypticon that's coming up in McMinnville, Tennessee. That and much more right here on this edition. Stay tuned. Hi, this is Jesse from Hell Bent Holler. I want to invite you to the Tennessee Wildman and Cryptid Con in McMinnville, Tennessee at the Milner Recreation Center on August the 10th. I'll be there giving a presentation on my experiences and my findings while doing outdoor paranormal research in the Southern Appalachian region. I look forward to meeting everybody there and hearing the other speakers talk. It's going to be a wild time, so I hope you can join us. Hello, my name is M.K. Davis, and I'd like to invite you to come out and meet myself and other great researchers at the second annual Tennessee Wildman Cryptid Con on August the 10th. Uh, it's going to be a great program. We hope you'll join us for what's going to be a great event, and I'll see you there. Tennessee, the volunteer state, a beautiful, rugged land, cloaked in the mists of a bygone era, these hills, old and worn, hold tight to their mysteries, but if you know where to look, maybe just maybe you can find something legendary. Douglas and Lanier, that's where I choose to be. Douglas and Lanier, that's the agency for me. Rock solid insurance coverage or sound financial planning for my family's future. Douglas and Lanier is where I choose to call home. Grace Family Pharmacy announces new medication packaging service. It provides a simpler, safer medication experience through convenient, personalized packaging using the latest in pharmacy robotics. We're located at 357 West Main Street. Our phone number is 931-473-6418. The My Usage app is a way to conveniently pay online, anytime, day or night. You can also come by any Caney Fork Electric office and sign up for the prepay option available using the My Usage app. Know exactly how much electricity is used each day and the cost. Best of all, no monthly bill. You can set up email or text alerts. Keep track of your usage and pay your bill, all with the My Usage app from Caney Fork. Caney Fork Electric, keeping you informed. Security Federal Savings Bank is always pleased to provide virtually every banking service you could ever need. But more than that, we are proud to offer a relationship with you, your family, or your company. We've been here supplying just what you need and building a trust, a relationship. And that's something hard to find these days. Our bankers are here for you, here to help. If you are interested in a relationship, come to the friendliest bank in town. Security Federal Savings Bank, member FDIC. Welcome to another edition of Community Insider. Join us as we travel Middle Tennessee, uncovering history and experiencing the adventure of unique stories and events coming to you inside your community. 
Hello, I'm Jonathan Womack. Welcome back to this edition of Community Insider as we are coming to you from off the beaten path location with Mr. Randy Hutchins, who is the event director for the upcoming Tennessee Wildman and Crypticon uh, event mm -hmm. that is uh, really new to our area, but you're also from Warren County area. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, I am. Thanks for being on the show today. Thank you for having me. And uh, this is our first time, or my first time to interview you. Mm -hmm. uh, you being from Mac Menville, uh, you have uh, already had this event or a similar event like this mm -hmm. in other areas, but you've decided to bring it home. I'm excited about that because it's very mysterious and interesting for me who don't stay in the realm of uh, Sasquatch hunters and stuff like that. But just like you hear the, the name, uh, like you've heard about uh, Conventions. On inventions, mm -hmm. uh, there's an event or a convention for people who's looking into stuff like this. So tell us mm -hmm. what this is about. Okay, so uh, basically what this is, what we're doing is we, we've got the event together so that we've got 10 guest speakers they are going to be there. Uh, the speakers are experiencers or they have had encounters themselves uh, over the years. Uh, we have a uh, vendor hall, exhibitor hall that'll have craft vendors. Uh, we got about 50 of those. We were hoping to bring the event here and and stimulating the local economy, uh, kind of like how the vendor they they have the uh, uh, the craft fairs in the yeah. in the uh, the fall mm -hmm. here in town, uh, similar to that, uh, get people involved uh, locally uh, with the more like you said the more mysterious elements that that, that this draws forth. Um, we have a lot of people that have that have been contacting us. Uh, interested in the event because they say they've had encounters themselves. That's, cool. uh, cool. that's one thing we're, we're trying to do is get those people involved and get get the community involved, stuff like that. I, I'm sure everybody's wondering uh, h how many of these people that would come to something like this really believe. Well, that's that's part of the idea. Is most yeah. most really believe that there could be something out there, and I, I see the T-shirts. If you go to Gatlinburg, go to Smokies, you'll see all kind of Sasquatch, which has really become very famous in the yeah. last few years. Oh yeah, I believe. And if you'll actually go, uh, there's places and and tracks in Warren County that I filmed before, even years past. Uh, one of those noted in the Irving College area, you'll see a Sasquatch sign. I know exactly and, what you're talking uh, about. <laughs> so anyway, exactly what you're talking it, about. The, the, the realm of Sasquatch, like even the area that we're at now could be questionable as to uh, how many Sasquatch could, could be hiding out. But literally, the mountainous region of Tennessee is vast. Yes. People don't realize how vast it is, but it, it's still fun to uh, get people together for something like this for a convention, uh, having fun, bringing your family, yeah. family uh, environment, right? Yes, so yes, very much T so. Tell me about that part of the... We've got, we've got face painting for the kids. Uh, we have food trucks that are going to be there. Uh, yeah, it's, it's totally family, family vibes what we're going for. That's awesome. That's awesome. And so let's talk about... Uh, um, some of the vendors that's coming. You say you've mm -hmm. got up to 50. There may yes. be more by mm -hmm. the time that this takes place. Yep. What, what kind of vendors have you got? Uh, we've got bakeries coming. Uh, we've got uh, mm -hmm. a, a lot of Bigfoot-centric kind of uh, sellers that are selling everything from um, magnets to stained glass. Uh, we've got uh, a, what is that guy called? A pyro, pyro carver. He uses fire to make a... Uh, uh, paintings in wood. Mm -hmm. um, we've got several like uh, specialist kind of people, vendors that are coming. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. And with that event coming, it gives people a chance to meet other people. Mm -hmm. uh, you're you're going to get to hear other speakers. You've got a vast speaker lineup. Yeah. Let's, let's talk just a little bit about that. Who okay. you got coming? We've got a couple of locals that are going to be talking about uh, local encounters and sightings that have happened. Uh, we have people that are coming in from Texas, from Mississippi. Um, M.K. Davis is from coming from Mississippi. He's the guy, the gentleman that did the uh, stabilization on the Patterson-Gimlin footage, if you've ever seen that. Okay. Uh, we've got a group called Hellbent Holler that's coming. Uh, they're an on-the-ground uh, research team out of North Carolina. They're coming. Uh, got Chester Moore Jr., who is the editor of Texas Wildlife, I believe it's magazine. Uh, he'll be there talking about his dark, dark outdoors uh, media. Uh, we've got we've got a whole stack. That's cool. That's cool. This may open up another door to people that hasn't thought about doing it, but diving into to this area, enjoying yeah. the outdoors, just like. Be honest with you. 
on the site that we're at, the cool river, uh, the, the outdoors element is is perfect for any family. Yes, and especially family, out, around here, it's beautiful yeah, out here. And Warren County is just full of that. So mm -hmm. people that may be watching, you may be thinking about traveling here. We've got plenty of local places to stay, great motels, hotels, campsites. By the way, we're just a few feet from a great campsite that has several different facilities that's available mm -hmm. uh, and, and several more. Man, we have so many, Warren County has so many brand new RV sites that mm -hmm. people that is coming to a convention like this could just come, set up, yeah. uh, pay their rental fee, and then go back home. Yep, definitely. And, and so that's growing each and every day. I, I know of the last year we've had two new RV sites that's just opened up in Warren County, mm -hmm. uh, available to the public, and uh, so so many options that we have. So let's go back to the date, the times, and, and when people can look forward to coming to the convention. Okay, it'll be August 10th, which is Saturday. Uh, it'll be from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. that afternoon. Um, like I said, we're going to have food trucks there. Uh, the food trucks, I believe, are going to be there from noon to noon to four. On a personal level, mm -hmm. why are you so into this? Why would you want to get this going? Uh, I had an encounter myself back in 1997 here in Warren County, of all places. Um, my cousin and I, I, I'm sure you know of the old uh, uh, quarry going towards uh, Viola, yes. off on the side. Yeah. We were up there at that quarry, goofing off at the lake up there, and something started vocalizing at us that sounded like a howler monkey. And I've grown up in the woods, grown up in the sticks. I know animal sounds. I'd never heard anything like that before in my life. And as we were kind of looking up at the cliff where this, where this howler monkey kind of sound was coming from, a boulder about that big around just comes flying off oh the cliff. Gosh. And that was the day that I got hooked on all this stuff, was because I, I there's nothing else that I know that could have done something like that that didn't have hands or arms to pick it up and throw it. Brad Walker, no. who is over the library, mm -hmm. we have film of previous tall tales. We do tall tales mm -hmm. in October, uh, which we, you may be seeing more of Randy for later on when we try to do some more tall tales. but. Uh, Brad Walker and some of his family, who's mm -hmm. lived back in Irving College area, he told of a, a story, and they didn't call it, call it Sasquatch mm -hmm. years ago, yeah. uh, early 1900s, late 1800s. They called it uh, the, something about the Screamer, mm -hmm. and it was this mysterious creature like a Sasquatch that would scare people in the area. Now, this was, we're talking about 100 years ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And your description of what it done, yeah. just aggravating the public yeah. was very similar to what he described and by the way you can catch that on some of our archives and, and that's that's not just a promo for us but unique that mm -hmm. we've never talked about this before and then something in the same area of Warren County not yeah. far right across the hill something like that took place a hundred oh, yeah. years ago so one of my favorite tales is the ones that my mother used to tell us all the time and anybody that lives up through Irving College and up into Grundy County along Tarleton and that way you'll know this. Some of you out at Jack's Pearl and stuff talk about something very similar. It's called the White Thing. And it was a not quite ghost, not quite animal. There's still tales of it today. The Kind of interesting things is that through the years doing research in different books, talking with different people, I have actually come across accounts that go all the way back to the early 1800s in a newspaper article. Then I found a reference in the Civil War in the valley, right in tar the top of Tarleton Valley at the foot of the mountain, at my great-great-grandparents' place, the Morton House. and. It has went through the years, and my mother used to sit when I was little and tell us the stories, and I've heard my grandmother and my great-grandmother all sit and tell us the stories. So I'm just going to kind of start where I started with it, and that's in 1974-5. A lot of people will remember there was a lot of bad floods here. The tornado came through and killed several people, and we had the snowstorms. Well, we had really horrible storms, lightning and stuff, and I came from a big family, and my mother came from a big family, so she was raised kind of by her grandmother a lot at the foot of the mountain, and she had polio as a child, so she was always around the older people, and they would tell the stories and tales, and the story was that there's a white thing that lives up through the valley, 
And the stories my mother told, I never heard of it hurting anyone. It would do damage to property, break fences, might kill animals, but it never hurt anyone. And the dogs were terrified of it. Just literally would hide under the porch, crying and refuse to go out. But on this dark night, my father was at work in one of the factories here in town. And my mother, she did not like lightning really much. So the floodwaters had started rising. So she decided we're going to my great grandmother's house at the foot of the um, Tarleton, at the head of Tarleton Valley. It's right before you cross the bridge on the right in front of the old Tate and Dykes nursery building there. All that's left now is the well. And so we get there, mama has six kids. My uncle Ricky shows up and he's got his oldest son that's my age. And my uncle Bill showed up. My grandmother, great grandmother had three big feather beds in the side room like a lot of old people did. And they're these really large, big beds. So I went to sleep at 10, about 10 o'clock at night and the storm raging outside. And the next morning I wake up and I'm in bed instead of being in the bed with my siblings and my mother, I'm in bed with my aunt, uncle, and my cousin. And I'm like, why did everybody move beds in the middle of the night? And during the middle of the night, in the height of the storm and the floodwaters coming down the mountain, they said it come down the little valley that runs back behind there. Caddy Corner is on the right from the main road where it turns to go up the mountain. On the right, there's a little valley that goes up. And they said that it came down that valley. You could hear it, and it sounded just like a woman screaming. And it went right up one side of the house right over the top of the house and right off the other side and on down into the valley screaming the whole time. You know, that's what makes this fun. You can bring out your whole family to the Tennessee Wildman Crypticon event. Enjoy yourselves. Lots of great vendors, lots of great crafts. And Randy, for the folks that's watching, what's the price of this for a family? What's it going to cost? It's only $5 admission to get in. Oh, wow. And if you're, and if you're, uh, if you're under tw the age of 12, it's free. Wow. So, so. cost-effective for the whole family. Mm -hmm. Can't beat that. And what you'll see, what you'll get to encounter will be just as important and it's worth the price. So what a great thing, man. Thank you for Thank you. talking with us, getting to see sort of behind the scenes of this great event that's coming. Why don't you support it? If you're not into stuff like that, but you want to support something that's brought back locally, it's right here in Matt Minville, then come and be with us. And if you're watching, no matter where you're at, and you are intrigued by this stuff, you'd like to bring your family, you will not find a more beautiful area on the planet than Warren County, Tennessee, where this is gonna be held, and tons, tons of parks, state parks, free parks, just like we're standing at, that's not really promoted. We're at Rocket Park, by the way, and this is one off the beaten path that you can come, have a picnic with your family, and it's it's not, you know, very populated with people all the time. So there's tons of parks that we have. You can get out in the outdoors, do your own searching, uh, find that Sasquatch that's out there, because we'd all like to see it, and we would love to see you at the upcoming event. Thank you for watching to this edition of Community Insider, along with all the productions staff we want to thank you until next time we hope to see you inside your community but if you know where to look maybe just maybe you can find something legendary